When Andrew Sulky came to Britain in the 1960s, he was expecting to be welcomed by the British publishing industry. And actually, he had some success, but he also saw that many of the other writers uh, in, from the Caribbean who had come over were a bit at sea. Uh, there were um, restrictions on housing. Uh, a lot of people came up against the no blacks, no Irish, no dogs um, that landladies or landlords would uh, tell have on cards. Um, they also faced casual and deliberate racism. And so Andrew Salke, who was a, a very generous and very sociable guy, um, banded together with some other writers of the time, particularly John LaRose from Trinidad and Kamau Braithwaite from um, Barbados. And the three of them formed uh, what would become the Caribbean Artist Movement, which was a movement to um, really highlight the work that writers, illustrators, artists, and poets were doing. And they would have uh, evenings together um, and uh, you know show examples of each other's works and uh, have little um, mini exhibitions and uh, poetry readings, etc. Then um, they decided that they weren't getting enough attention from the white publishing industry. Um, it was a fad to publish one black author, but then they were done. And so John LaRose started New Beacon Publishing, uh, which was the first black independent publishing house in Britain. Um, he had a bookshop called New Beacon that was right underneath the uh, publishing house. And Andrew Sulky um, was there from the start. He also helped Jessica and Eric Huntley start a similar publishing venture called Bogle Louverture. Uh, Bogle Louverture, um, which was uh, located in another part of London, uh, and New Beacon were not rivals, but partners really in producing books for black readers at a time when it was very difficult to get anything um, that was either written by or about black people in Britain. So um, at Bogle Louverture, one of the things that um, occurred was they had a um, big conference. They decided they were going to have a conference of black educators, black publishers, black writers. And one of the speakers at that conference was a guy named Bernard Cord. And Bernard Cord was a doctoral student, um, and he was writing about educationally subnormal classrooms. And what happened with the second generation of black children who came to this country was many, many, many of them were placed in these educationally subnormal classrooms. Uh, because their teachers said they couldn't speak English, even though they were speaking English. It was just a different form of English than what um, British teachers were used to. The teachers said that they couldn't function and that they were rowdy and disruptive. So they put them in these special classrooms, the idea being that they would catch up to their white counterparts and then go back to mainstream classrooms. But it never happened. Most of those kids stayed in those classrooms throughout their career and ended up incapable of going to university, let alone finding a job. So um, <clears throat> Bernard Cord wrote a pamphlet called How the West Indian Child is Made Educationally Subnormal in the British Educational System. A long title, but it was very influential. And it made Jessica Huntley at Bogle Louverture decide that she really wanted to publish books for black readers black child readers. Uh, and so she became the first publisher, black independent publisher, uh, who published books for children. And Andrew Salke was the her first editor. So they published several books. Um, and then uh, after a while, uh, Valerie Bloom became the second children's editor there. She's a poet, and she's still publishing work today. So that was a really important initiative, but it wasn't the only initiative in London uh, and across the country. Several places, um, community centers, for example, in places like Islington and Hackney, um, would have writing groups. Some of these, like the one in Hackney's Centerprise, were um, for young people, teenagers, and they would produce poetry that would then be collected up 
and uh, published by Centerprise. Uh, so Talking Blues from 1976 was a Centerprise publication that um, actually launched the careers of uh, the illustrator Duffy Weir, um, the uh, storyteller Sandra Agard, and the poet Hugh ba Boatswain. So it was, it was really significant. Other uh, community presses focused on women, uh, black women or Asian women uh, in Britain. And so, for example, Grace Nichols, the poet, um, first was published by an, a community press. She published some folk tales with drawings by her daughter. And later that same year, a mainstream publisher that you might have heard of, Lady Bird, uh, picked up that story and put it in one of the um, books that uh, they were producing of folk tales around the world. That was a highlight, those, that 1960s and 70s publishing period. Um, by the 1990s, uh, again, children were struggling in school. Um, and uh, one black mother, Verna Wilkins, uh, was horrified when her child came home and said, um, showed her a book he had done in class where he had colored himself in white. And he said, it has to be like that because books are about white people. And so she started Tamarin Press, um, and Tamarin Press wanted to look very similarly to what um, Bogle Literature had done, looking back uh, with books like Getting to Know Ourselves to sort of Africa and the Caribbean. So she published um, books that looked back. So she published folk tales uh, from around the world. Um, and she also published books from the present uh, so kids doing ordinary things like having birthday parties. But she also wanted them to look to the future. So whereas Bogle Louverture had produced biographies of past heroes, people like Mary Seacole, uh, Verna Wilkins published current and contemporary black heroes, people like the Baroness uh, Scotland um, and other figures that children might actually recognize and be able to look up to and become. So community publishing has been very important to producing strong identities for children throughout Britain's history. And it continues today with Ken Wilson Max's uh, Alana Max. You also have um, publishers like Knights of and um, other publishers that may not focus exclusively on black British children, but are still focusing on those groups of children who can't find themselves in books. <laughs>